All right, guys. Regal project update for this weekend. Nothing really much to update because we've had so much bad weather. Last weekend was wasted with weather. Uh, we've had nothing but rain. There's lots of flooding. You know, people's evacuated, lost their houses and all kinds of crap. Uh, anyway, uh, it's springtime and that's usually what happens around here. Uh, it rained again last night. Uh, but anyway, here's what's going on with the uh, Regal project. Uh, these are those HO305 heads that I pulled off the 88 SS Monte Carlo. I soaked them in muriatic acid for a couple hours uh, and it did clean them up really, really nice. That was really nice cast gray looking. Um, I then uh, cleaned them off with brake clean. I actually washed them with the hose after I pulled them out of the muriatic acid. Then I used brake clean, a whole can on each one, uh, up inside and around the outside and everything, pretty much just to wash off any traces of muriatic acid. And then I blowed them dry with the blower. Uh, they looked really nice. And then I set them in my garage on the floor. Well, we've had so much rain, so much moisture in the air that they surface rusted. Uh, I ended up taking them to work. Uh, my boss has a brand new hot tank. Uh, so I ran them through the hot tank for an hour. And they come out pretty decent. Uh, they are surface rusted, like I said, but they're good enough, you know. Uh, anyway, I've, I've, uh, I've got one finished down here already and assembled. This one, all I have to do is assemble it. Uh, I did grind the valves myself, lap the valves, basically. Uh, I do it pretty redneck. I've done about a dozen sets like this. I use a drill on the valve stem, and uh, I use valve grinding compound, the course, and then I clean everything and then go back and use the fine. I mean, it, it's taken all morning. I started at 8 this morning. I think it's about 12.30 now. Uh, but anyway, I, I, you know, put it on the on the valve seat there and then the valve face and then put the valve in and then use the drill on the stem up there. Now, I don't use the drill high on high. I just barely hit the trigger and then back and forth and back and forth a dozen times, you know. Uh, but anyway, in and out, in and out. And uh, as you can see, it... Uh, they, it worked pretty nice. These actually were pretty nice to begin with and the valves are actually really nice and tight in their seats So that's that's freaking awesome uh, I, I've torn heads apart that the valves just flopped in there, you know, these are actually pretty good uh, But anyway, th another thing that I did and it was absolutely uh, Kind of a waste of time, but I just I couldn't help myself and I only spent about an hour on it um, If you look down in there if you can see that I poured it on them a little bit. Now 305 heads, you know, they they don't flow worth a shit because the valves are so small anyway. Uh, but they have so many brick wall edges in there. Um, I just went ahead and smoothed everything out. Now, like I said, I only spent an hour on it. I could have made them, you know, super badass, but there's no need. Um, I did port match the intake, uh, intake side. Uh, I did use the Felpro gasket up there and then drew it out and then ground them to it. Uh, but anyway, I just pretty much just cleaned them up a little bit. But the one thing I've noticed on small block heads, the stock ones, is the part going down right here on the exhaust. It always has a sharp brunt turn. Uh, so I go in and I radius that a little bit. So it just makes it a little bit smoother, you know, for the exhaust to come out. You know, I think my, my little 305 is probably, I bet it makes another one horsepower now, man. It's going to be a badass. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Uh, but anyway... I just did it because uh, they were they were just terrible. I mean, it's got to help, you know, a little bit. But I know it's not going to be a race car, and that's not what I'm after. It's just I just did it because I wanted to do it. I ported a lot of heads, and, and I actually enjoy doing it. I have quite a few air tools and, and cone burrs and long ones and all kinds of stuff to use, so it's kind of fun. I didn't go back with sanding rolls or drums, you know, and do this or nothing. I just left it because there's no need. Um, Anyway, so what I got going on is the 305 out of that guy's truck. I'm supposed to meet him today at 2 o'clock at his house. He lives here in the housing edition. The engine is in his garage floor, and it's actually on a little coaster dolly thing. Uh, and he told me I could have that too, so that's pretty cool. It just makes it easier for me, and I'm sure I can use it on another engine one day. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go get it. Um, <clears throat> I did go back over there and look at it uh, last weekend. Uh, it does have a little bit of ridge to it, but uh, he did say it wasn't smoking, it wasn't using oil or nothing, it just leaked. Uh, so, of course, I'm going to change all the gaskets. But uh, So what I've, what I've pretty much decided to do is use that 305 with these HO heads. And uh, I've, I have that jet 
uh, stage two performance quarter jet and it's it's requiring a cam up to 220 degrees and I have the cam that, that has that uh, it's a summit cam I can't remember the number but it's like a 467 lift uh, so again it's not a it's not a big powerhouse cam it's just gonna you know sound a little, a little better than a stock one uh, so what I've decided to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, use that cam and lifter kit and new time and chain stuff in that little 305 and put these heads on all new seals and gaskets remain all that stuff and i'm gonna roll man i don't really give a shit if this motor lasts six months i don't care it's you know six months is probably enough time for me to get my engine out of my truck redone uh, i think that thing just really probably only needs uh valve guides uh, so i'm gonna take the heads and i'm gonna have them rebuilt and uh i'm gonna go ahead and you know of course i'm gonna check the bearings and everything in it and i may go ahead and just re-bearing it re-ring it uh, it just depends on how bad it is. But anyway, um, so I don't have the valve springs for that cam, which kind of sucks. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the original 305s, uh, but I do have some shims here that I actually already had here. Uh, so I'm going to use those. I know it's not the ideal situation, but uh, it's just, that's that's all I can do. It's all I can afford to do, man. So I'm doing it. Um, the... Uh, it, you know, it's kind of funny. I know it's not going to have quite the RPM range that it needs because it's going to be falling off because, it, you know, the valve springs are too weak, obviously. But uh, I remember having a cam problem, a cam going flat on me pretty soon as a comp cam. That was about, I don't know, 12 years ago, maybe, somewhere around there. And I called comp cams and talked to the guy for a long time about it. And this was about the time when they took all the, the zinc out of the oils and shit. And that was how I learned that lesson because I was just using... Uh, Castrol GTX off the shelf from Walmart and it didn't have any zinc in it uh, so I pretty much wiped the hydraulic cam because I didn't know about that back then but anyway he told me another trick is to use the factory valve springs even though they're weak and run them for about 500 miles and then change them out now obviously that would be a pain in the ass to do that especially in the car um, of course I, I'm leaving these I, I just don't care it's like I said I'm not building a race car but uh Anyway, moving on, uh, I've got a Summit intake here. This is brand new. Now, I did not buy this. Uh, I may have to pay 50 bucks for it, but I just don't know yet. Uh, what happened was the factory quarter jet aluminum intake off that SS Monte Carlo has a water outlet here. So I tried taking it out, and it broke off. Uh, the aluminum was just so corroded on that fitting. Uh, so anyway, I took it to work and asked my boss if he had an easy out, so he... He actually tried to get it out for me with the easy out, and it actually broke the the boss off the side of the intake. It just broke it off. Uh, anyway, he had this intake there. This was a mistake. Uh, they ordered this brand new from Summit to put on a guy's Corvette, uh, like a 77 Corvette. And uh, when it come in, the, the other guy I work with actually just took it out of the box, cleaned it up, and, and actually painted it black. And he painted it on the box. Uh, so then when he goes to put it on, he noticed that this is for the you know, 86 and up or 87 and up, whatever it is. I think it's 86 and up center bolt head because uh, these are more straight up than the the old ones. Uh, anyway, total mistake. So they called Summit. Summit did not want to take it back because he had painted it and painted it on the box. Uh, so he got stuck with it. I don't know how much that intake was, uh, but it, it pretty much looks like a stock one. And it has, uh, the only one I care about is the alternator port, which is right here. It does have it, and the air conditioning support bracket to the back of the compressor. It does have that. It does have the matching coil bracket mounts here, like that 88 has. Uh, I don't care about the water outlet back there. All I care about is the one here and the one going to the water pump. Um, the bad thing is, is this thing is just a little bit taller than that factory one. Um, I didn't actually measure it, but it could have been like 3 8 or a half inch difference in height. And the problem with G-bodies is hood clearance with a factory hood. So I'm a little worried about it. Now, there's uh, another guy that uh, is a customer of my boss's yesterday. His intake uh, is cracked. So they're actually going to take my intake and his intake to a TIG welder today and have them welded. Um, so I may not use this. I would rather use the factory one uh, just because this is a little bit taller. Uh, so anyway, we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes from there, I guess. But anyway, if if it doesn't end up welding or working out, I'll have to, I got to pay him 50 bucks for this. And uh, he agreed to take like 10 bucks a week out of my check. So I guess that's not too bad. 
50 bucks. He paid a hell of a lot more than that for it. Uh, I don't know who makes these for Summit, uh, but it does it does seem pretty nice. Uh, I always, if I buy an aftermarket intake, I always buy an Edelbrock, uh, just because, you know, I never really hear bad things about Edelbrock intakes, and as many of them as I've ran on small blocks, I've never had an issue with one, so. Anyway, uh, what else? I guess that's it. There's really nothing more to report. Um, I mocked up the course port and fender on the car. I just have one bolt at the front, one bolt at the back, and they're not even tight. Uh, I was basically trying to figure out how hard it was going to be to do that derail uh, electric fan setup I've got on here. And it's actually going to take a lot of mods, so I, I may not be messing with that because it's just going to take too much time. Um, I got to do some trimming, I got to build some brackets. And uh, the other part is, is I got to cut the lower corner off of it and plate it all back in to clear the steering box. Um, so I'm probably just going to unbolt this stuff. I'll probably end up putting the shroud and the clutch fan on it for now anyway. If it wasn't going to be too hard to do, I was going to go ahead and do it. But Anyway, I guess that's it. Uh, kind of excited to go get that engine because as long as the rain holds out today, I could probably you know get quite a bit done. Uh, I'm definitely going to have this head assembled in the next hour, and uh, then it'll be done, and I'm going to go ahead and paint them. Uh, then uh, the engine, I'll get it back, and I'll clean it up with quite a bit, and then I'll start tearing it apart to, you know, reseal it and stuff. Anyway, I'm pretty excited. It's, uh, I, I kind of like to get the engine and trans in this weekend, but I, I think it's supposed to rain again maybe Monday. I'm, you know, I'm off on Mondays, and uh, I'm pretty sure that possibly Monday I could have the, you know, be bolting the engine and tranny together and setting them down in there at least. But, uh, you know, I still got to put the the uh, steering column in and the forward harness, you know, wiring harness and all that crap. Uh, but I have a setup in there that I made years ago that's toggle switches and stuff. And uh, it's basically for hot wire running a, a small block. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'll probably just run it and go that way I can go ahead and break the cam in in the car and uh, with the front clip off and everything and that way if something goes bad then front clips off i got better access you know uh, the only bad thing is is the the headers uh, are going to be open and i don't know if my neighbors are going to like me for 20 minutes running this thing uh, to break a cam in so just kind of have to see how it goes i did end up with a set of long tube headers don't know what brand it is the guy didn't know uh, they were 30 bucks uh, they are pretty crusty looking uh, but hell, they're they're G body. They were off of Malibu, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use them. I, I'm not gonna clean them up or paint them or nothing. I'm just bolting them on because uh, because later I'd like to go ahead and maybe get some coated ones because uh, uh, Speedway sells them coated shorties for I think it's like 250 bucks or something. And uh, that's another thing I learned a long time ago. If you got those what do they call that coated Aluma coated or whatever headers. Uh, don't break your cam in right off the bat with those uh, headers on there because it will smoke the coating. Uh, so it's going to be good for me to break my cam in and everything with them old crusty ones. And then, you know, later on, a month or two down the road, if I get some money together, I can get some nice headers and put on there. I'd rather have the shorties than the long tubes anyway because the long tubes always drag on something that seems like on a G-body. All the ones I've had anyway. But uh, anyway, the... I learned that a long time ago on them coated headers. If you uh, break a cam in, you know that many, that much RPM right off the bat, it 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 turns that coating gray. Uh, the other thing uh, that I also found out uh, calling the company and talking to them about it was uh, fingerprints or anything on those headers. Uh, if you do get aluminum or aluma coated or AHC coated or whatever they are headers, brand new, uh, do not break your cam in with them and wipe, wipe them all down first before you start the engine for the first time because all those fingerprints and shit will cook to that coating uh, and you'll have a spot on there. Uh, anyway, that's just, that was on the phone with the guy at the company and uh, I have first-hand experience at cooking a set of those headers on break-in. Uh, but most guys now are running LSs and roller cams and shit so they don't have to worry about a cam break-in like I do. I'm still stuck in the dark ages with these hydraulic flat tablets, so. Anyway, guys, uh, I guess we'll see how it goes this weekend, but hopefully we don't have no more rain because if once it rains, I'm done out here, you know.